14 months before landing on the moon, Neil Armstrong was practicing landing the moon lander on the Earth, which was to reach the moon. But this experiment failed miserably because Neil Armstrong failed to land this prototype. It was his good fortune that he saved his life by ejecting himself in the last two seconds. But after that, when Apollo 11 moon lander successfully landed on the moon, the conspiracy theorists said that when they could not control the moon lander on the ground, then how did it land on the moon? 54 years have passed since Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon, but even today, many people believe that all this was a hoax created by NASA and America. If you listen to these conspiracy theorists, then their words have a lot of substance. They talk very logically after listening to which a common man is forced to think whether America had really lied to us, whether these moon landings were not shot in some desolate desert. Now, this is a coincidence or a conspiracy, but these theories find some excuse to revive after some time, as in 2002, when a man named Bart Sibrell, who believed that the moon landings were fake, asked some irrelevant questions to Apollo 11 astronaut Edwin Buzz Aldrin in front of the media. Aldrin got angry and punched Bart Sabrell in the face. This was the point when the theory against moon landing started raising objections once again. People said that Edwin Buzz Aldrin, who was the second to step on the moon, probably found the truth of the conspiracy theorist bitter. That is why he got angry. But what is the actual truth? Was NASA's moon landing true, or was it really a secret plan to humiliate the Soviet Union in the eyes of the world? During the Cold War at the beginning of the space race, it was the Soviet Union that sent the first satellite into space. Not only that, but it also sent the first unmanned spacecraft to touch the moon 10 years before NASA's Apollo 11 mission. So what happened that the Soviet Union could not send humans to the moon even once? while NASA has done this six times. Let's crack these theories one by one and try to find out the truth. The first thing that creates doubt in people's minds is the camera with which photographs were taken on the moon. Marcus Allen is a photographer who has a lot of knowledge about this camera. He says that when I see the photographs taken on the moon, I cannot believe how the astronauts would have operated such a complicated camera on the moon and that too from inside a spacesuit. A spacesuit is not an ordinary suit, but it is fully pressurized, which means in simple words, it is filled with air due to which precise movements of hands and fingers are not possible. Conspiracy theorist Ralph Rainey demonstrated an experiment in which he put his hand inside a container wearing astronaut gloves. Initially, he was able to move his hand and fingers freely but as soon as he removed all the air from the container with the help of a compressor, the gloves became stiff. It had become very difficult to move the hand in this vacuum chamber. He said that it is not possible to press the trigger of a camera or set the focus in this condition. If this is really so, then how are these memorable photos taken on the moon so sharp and perfect? Aerospace engineer Jay Windley says that the camera with which the astronauts took the photos on the moon was a Hessel Blade 500 EL camera, which was specially modified for lunar missions. It used to slide and get attached to the astronaut's suit so that there was no need to hold the camera with hands. Apart from this, the shutter button in this camera was also kept big so that it could be pressed easily by the astronaut's gloves. The focus ring was also modified in such a way that it could be rotated even with a stiff glove because they would not be able to see much left or right, up or down through the helmet of the spacesuit. This is why the astronauts had practiced this thing a lot on Earth itself, so that they could capture excellent photos on the moon. Even in these good photos, the conspiracy theorist caught a mistake. Lunar Shadows, a former head of the American Rocketdyne Company, believes that the shadows seen in the photographs are proof that we never went to the moon. He said that the shadows seen in many photographs taken on the moon are not parallel to each other. When the astronauts of Apollo 11 were present on the moon, the only source of light was the sun, so the shadows falling here 
objects should also have been parallel to each other. This is why many people believe that these photographs were taken in a studio using an artificial light source because the closer the light is, the farther the shadows will be from each other. As you can see in this photograph, the shadow of the landing gear of the lander is going in one direction, but the shadow of the astronaut is going in the other direction. Now it may sound that perhaps these shadows are really being created due to artificial light sources, but Experts believe that it often happens on the ground as well, that the shadows are not parallel to each other. For the shadows to be parallel, it is necessary that both the objects are standing parallel to each other. Apart from this, if the photo is taken at a wide angle, then even in that case, the shadows will not appear parallel, or even if the surface is not smooth, then also the shadows will not be parallel. Another theory that conspiracy theorists often give is about this photo in which astronaut Aldrin is descending the stairs of the lunar lander and sunlight is not falling on the side of the lander, but still Aldrin is seen well illuminated. So what is the reason that the shadow of the lander is completely black while light is falling on the body of the astronaut? Conspiracy theorist Marcus Allen says that this is possible only if some other soft light is falling on them, of course, due to the absence of atmosphere on the moon, sunlight is unable to spread, but when this light falls on the surface of the moon, it reflects and bounces back, just like our Earth is illuminated on a full moon night. Similarly, in this photo, there is a backlight falling on astronaut Aldrin, which is reflecting from the surface of the moon. If we talk about lightning, then the light passing through the American flag is also viewed with suspicion. Conspiracy theorists believe that if sunlight is falling on one side of the American flag, then how is the other side also perfectly illuminated? Actually, the American flag that was placed on the moon was made of nylon, and it is the speciality of this material that it allows light to pass through easily. But if there is no wind on the moon, then why was the American flag waving when it was placed? Apollo 11 astronaut Buzz Aldrin says that we had not practiced planting the flag on the moon's soil beforehand, and we had to twist the rod on which the flag was placed and apply force downwards to bury it in the ground. Because gravity is very low on the moon, that is why the astronauts had to apply more force and that is why the flag was shaking more than necessary, which would make the onlooker feel as if it is being waving in the wind. And the second thing was that the flag was designed in such a way that it had aluminum rods on its sides, but a rod was also installed on its upper part so that the flag does not wither on the moon. Conspiracy theorist and famous author Ralph Rainey raised a question about moon landing, which is not possible to explain in the Earth's atmosphere. He says that when a blower is hit on soil or even small stones, the air pressure shakes the soil and stones and creates a small crater. This blower has much less power than the thruster of the moon lander. So why is it that it removed a lot of soil and rocks, but did not create even a small crater under the Apollo 11 lander? Whereas what should have happened was that the soil flying from the moon's surface at the time of landing should have completely covered these landing gears, but there is not even a bit of soil on it. On this, the physicist says that the lander's rocket motors were turned off a few feet before landing, and by the time it touched the moon's surface, 75% of the thrust had already reduced. That is why it did not create any crater. But if you look carefully at the pictures, this thrust has definitely removed some soil, which is seen scattered in different directions, but not enough to cover the landing gear. Let us assume that if even 25% thrust was left, then it amounts to 1,250 kilograms. If this much thrust had fallen on the Earth, it would definitely have created a big crater. But why it did not do so on the moon? This has not been explained till now in the Earth's atmosphere. There is another big question which conspiracy theorists often ask that in the photographs taken on the moon, the sky appears completely black, like it appears on the earth at night, but why the stars are not visible in it. The lens of the camera also works like the human eyes. When we look in complete darkness, then the stars of the eyes become bigger so that maximum light can enter. 
Similarly, the stars of the eyes become smaller when we look in the light. If you have ever had the chance, you might have noticed that at the time of stargazing, the surroundings are kept completely dark so that the stars in our eyes become bigger and even the slightest light from the stars can reach the eyes. But if someone turns on the light in this situation, the stars stop being visible. Similarly, in the Apollo 11 mission also, when the photos were captured on the moon, the entire surface of the moon was shining with sunlight due to which the camera lens did not capture the stars because a lot of light was already going inside it, which was much more than the light of the stars. At that time, despite the sunlight falling on the moon, the sky was black because there is no atmosphere on the moon. The atmosphere of our Earth spreads the sunlight due to which we see the sky blue during the day. But in reality, behind this atmosphere, the sky is black. What do you think whether America really sent humans to the moon or not? Or if you have any questions in your mind, then definitely tell me in the comment section. Hope you all will like and share this video a lot. Thank you very much for your loving comments. See you in the next amazing video. Please like and subscribe our channel. Thank you for watching.